Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Boo. It is 8.18. I'm in early today on May 26, 2022. And I'm live on Facebook and Calvary Christian Fellowship's Facebook page and uh, my YouTube channel at Bo Willette. Glad to see Tamara's already there in the comment corner listening. And these devos are Monday through Friday, and we go through the Bible in a devotion style. So if you've never gone through the Bible, interested in reading through the Bible, just kind of understanding the Bible and the flow of the Bible, these devotions will probably be for you. Um, And if you're with me long enough, you're actually going to get through the entire Bible, which is pretty radical. Um, For sure, a lot of people, if you ask them if they've read through the Bible, they're like, nope. And just a reminder that I was a a kid who did not read the Bible, was not around things of the Bible, and uh, ended up reading the Bible, started reading in my late teenage years, and getting through some of the word uh, of the Bible, and was really blown away by the scriptures. I was really floored how different it was from uh, uh, my presuppositions that I had. And uh, really, really blessed me. Um, and so me being 17, 18, 19, reading through the Bible, um, uh, really opened up my eyes to a lot of different things, uh, different paradigms, uh, different ways to see things, and uh, and really falling in love with God. Really an interesting testimony for sure. But uh, that's why I love just going through the Bible. Now we're at the last book of the Torah, the book of Deuteronomy, which just means reiteration. And we're in chapter 16 and going into 17 today. So that's kind of where we're at. And so I'm going to kick it off, get into it. And uh, if anything comes up, always technically can always just comment in, uh, let me know, you know, how things are sounding, how things are going, if it's going okay, if it's not going okay, just what's happening. That's always a big help um, to me when I'm doing the, the, the broadcast. So chapter 16 is a reiteration of the festivals that Israel is supposed to have. So remember, they were supposed to bring their tithes, everything they gleaned from the land, they were supposed to bring before the Lord every three years. And then, and then they were to have these celebrations as well. They were to have, bring uh, their offerings before God and, and have these kind of in a sense, very um, regular uh, times of having like a barbecue, if you will, near the tabernacle. And uh, and if you will, at the tabernacle, this meeting of presence, uh, this tent-like structure. And, and then they were to have these big festivals as well. So if you can imagine 12 tribes living in the land of Israel... And the tabernacle being set up in a certain spot that God will appoint. And then they are to, in a sense, meet together. The tribes are to come together and hang out and enjoy some time together with the Lord. And these festivals pointed always to something. Something in the past that God did or something in the future. So there was always this idea of thanksgiving, right? Something of the past, like, hey, I'm thankful for that. And then there's always this remembrance or are the, are, are that there's that remembrance of the past, but then there's this hope of future grace, right? This hope of something cool in the future is going to happen. And so festivals were like that um, in Israel. And, and it's kind of neat. If you think about it a little bit, it's kind of like, you know, have you ever, I mean, we all have families and you know how our families get together over periods of time, we don't see each other. And then all of a sudden we come from far way away, maybe, and we have a, some kind of big gathering at a home and it's really awesome, right? Everybody, you know, reflects on times of the past and then they, you know, then we, talk about what we're hoping for what are what we hope happens in the future what we're looking forward to so it says observe the month of a bid and keep the passover to the lord your god so that was a reminder of the passover right what happened in egypt it says 
And uh, in the month of Abid, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. Again, it's a remembering of the past. So remembering is a big part of our life. It's something to be doing um, in our life with God continually. Meaning I'm always to remember God's goodness and what he's done in the past. The things that he's done, right? And and then it goes over a, if you will, the prescription of the ceremony. Um, you know, you sh- in verse 3, you shall eat no leavened bread with it. So none of that fluffy bread, man, with the Passover. Get rid of the old fluff bread, right? Let's eat it unleavened. No leaven. In haste, right? Don't got time for this thing to rise. We're going to, you know, that's, that's the remembrance of that historical event of the Passover. Eating the bread in haste and going on their way. They're going to be leaving. God is delivering them out of the land. And so it says, um, it is called the bread of affliction. Interesting, right? The bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste that you remember the day in which you came out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. Remember the bread of affliction, right? They were slaves in Egypt. They were afflicted by their enemies. But remember your deliverance. Oh, man, friends, right? Remember your deliverance. Today, what are we to do? Remember your deliverance. Who's your great deliverer? Are you taking the time to remember? And that's the idea. And that's what we're doing. That's why we do a, a devotion in the AM, is we want to remember our deliverance. We want to remember our identity, right? Who we are, where we come from, how we got here, that kind of idea. And of course, that brings us always back to God and God's work in our life. And we have been drawn to God. God has called us out of this affliction, right? And so it says in verse 4, And no leaven shall be seen among you in all the territory for seven days, nor shall you eat any meat which you sacrifice the first day at twilight. Remain overnight until morning. Um, It shouldn't remain, uh, remain overnight until morning. So eat in haste. No leftovers. Uh, You may not sacrifice the Passover within uh, any of your gates, which the Lord your God gives you, but at the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. So you can't just do this anywhere, right? You got to do it where God uh, establishes his name, his presence. You're going to be with the Lord. And uh, so it goes through that, and it goes through then the Feast of Weeks, right? Have you ever heard of that? The Feast of Weeks? That's another big festival. You shall count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain, right? So kind of around the harvest time, right? Then you shall keep the Feast of Weeks to the Lord your God with the tribute of a freewill offering from your hand. Hey, whatever the grain produces, let's bring it on in, which you shall give to the Lord your God who, as he blesses you. You shall rejoice, a festival of uh, rejoicing, right? Rejoicing for what he's done in the present. Isn't that cool? So you have the Passover for what he's done in the past. You have the Feast of Weeks for what he's produced, given you right now. <clears throat> a lot, and then let's go into the Feast of Tabernacles and see what that is. Uh, that's in verse 13. This is the third festival. You shall observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days where you have gathered from your fl- the threshing floor and from your wine press. Okay, so you're going to get the old wine press going. You're going to, you know, hop in there and get that thing going. Stomp on those grapes, right? Uh, get that stuff happening. And then... It's like, so this festival, it really stresses that wine press as well. And then it says, and you shall rejoice in your feast. Another rejoicing festival, right? Uh, So all the festivals have really a, a rejoicing aspect to them. And it says, you and your son and your daughter, your male servants and your female servant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, all who are within your gates. Man, you bring everybody. Feast of Tabernacles, everybody gets involved. Everybody is there. Everybody's ready to go, right? Uh, And 
And it says, Then seven days you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in pl- the place where the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands. So you surely rejoice. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Tabernacles. So he named the feast right there. And um, they shall not appear empty-handed, right? They shall bring things before the Lord, bring the festival items, get ready for the big feast. Man, it's going to be awesome. It's, we're going to have a blast. Very cool. And every male, every hu- uh, man is to give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord. Uh, so the men, you know, I think of the men. Men have to be leaders, right? The men have to be leaders. What are they to do? They are to bring they are to make sure that they are leading and bringing their families before God, right? And appearing before God and hearing God and listening. So not just the ladies, right? Not, you know, but the men need to be some leaders, right? And kind of think about God and be hanging out with God and, you know, listening again, uh, paying attention, you know, having God on the mind. And isn't that cool? You know, men that really, they shall appear before the Lord during the feast. So, hey, three times a year, these men need to step up and they need to get over there, right? And they need to celebrate. And again, uh, tabernacle, looking at a time of, during the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, they would set up uh, this idea of uh, 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 kind of camping outside, and uh, what a cool feast that was, you know, the tabernacles, because, you know, you kind of sit outside and you, you have the campground going and, you know, you, you look at the stars, you look at the sky and, and you know, gosh, you kind of go, man, God, being with God, what, what is that like? And you have all these great stories, you know. So in verse 18, it says, You shall appoint judges and officers in all your gates, which the Lord your God gives you according to the tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Oh, wow. Okay, so it says here that you shall appoint these judges and officers at the gates, right? At the gates. Um, And that gate area was kind of the place of, if you will, uh, governorship. And they shall judge justly. And you shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, meaning the idea is don't show favorites, right? Don't just pick out favorites because that's what you think or that's what you're familiar with or that's what looks like, you know, you or that, you know, that, you know, they seem like you and, you know, don't show, don't show partiality, right? So move aside the prejudice and judge justly, right? Just righteously, And it says, you shall follow what is altogether just that you may live and inherit the land your God is giving you. And you shall not plant for yourself any tree or wooden image near the altar, which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. You shall not set up a sacred pillar, which the Lord your God hates. Hey, you shouldn't build something that becomes a rival to the place where God has established his name. Right? No sacred pillars, no places where you go to and that's your secret spot, you know, and that's your little place and your, you know, and you got your little area, your little wooden image, you got your little sacred pillar built, you know, where it's very easy to bring people into that kind of little devotion that you got by the sacred pillar and by the, the wooden image out in the forest, you know, no, let God's tabernacle be the place where you guys go you know hang out with god you know and not other things so very cool i like the end of the chapter 16 i find it just really neat right hey let's judge righteously and and hey let's not have things that rival the the meeting together with god's people you know, is something rivaling you? Uh, is it is it pulling you away from the place of God's presence, the place of God's people, the dwelling place of God, the church, you know, the assembly of God? Is something getting in the way, pulling you away from that, moving you to another place 
um, instead of, you know, hanging out with the brothers and sisters in Christ and growing in the Lord, walking through what needs to be walked through, you know, with them. So you shall not sacrifice, chapter 17, right, to the Lord your God, a bull or sheep, which has any blemish or defect, right? It's abomination to the Lord, man. Don't be just bringing, there's a lot of abominations to the Lord, right? But man, that's an abomination. You know, don't, you know, you don't just, don't bring the, you know, the one-eyed willy, you know, over to the Lord and be like, yo, God, take this, right? The idea is, hey, when we think about God and bringing God something and coming to these festivals and bringing our tithes before the Lord, let's bring the best, right? Uh, you know, we want to honor God. God is amazing, right? That's how, that's how some of the worship songs we sing go, right? Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet, you know? Um, so if there's a found among you, any in the gates in which the Lord your God gives you a man or woman who has been wicked in the sight of the Lord your God in transgressing his covenant, right? It says, who has gone and served other gods and worshiped them, either the sun or the moon or the host of heavens, right? Which the other nations did and which I have not commanded as it is told you. And you hear of it and you inquire of it diligently. And it is indeed true. And by the way, it's something that is on the testimony of two or more witnesses, two or three witnesses, it says in verse six. Um, then in verse seven, it says the hands of the witness shall be the first against him to put him to death. And afterward, the hands of all the people, you shall put away the evil from among you. So they are to take this person to that gates, to the gates, the, the place where the governors are, the, their judges are, and, and there's to be the trial there. So if someone is stubbornly saying, you know what, I'm not going to worship Yahweh at all, then they were going to be tried in a court of law you know, based on the testimony of two or three witnesses. So it can't just be one person going to someone and say, hey, that person went to the sacred pillar and they're worshiping some sacred God. And blah, blah. no, it had to be two or three witnesses attested to. But notice, if you, if, if, if you did, you know, say something against someone, you had to be ready to throw the first stone. You had to be ready to throw the first stone. Ah, does that remind us of a New Testament narrative? Throwing the first stone, casting the first stone. If anyone is without sin, Jesus said to the crowd, cast the first stone. If you're without sin, throw that stone. You know, throw that stone. You, you, may, you say, okay, I'm going to, this person has broken the law. They have transgressed the law. And they are now brought before the, the judge. <clears throat> and now what do you say? If you're without sin, certainly cast the stone. And what is what happens? No one throws the stone at the lady caught in adultery. Mm, you have to throw the first stone. That would be tough, wouldn't it? Ooh, you'd have to really feel good about yourself knowing that you were going to be the one tossing the first stone. Like you got to really feel like, man, I'm a pretty good person. I don't have any sin in my life. Because under examination, what if you do have sin in your life? Ooh, then you would be like, ooh, maybe I'm the next in line to get a stone thrown at me. Oh, man. Tamara, bless you. You have a great day. And have a great time with your uh, 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 at breakfast. Yeah, so really, really cool passage section right here. And it reminds us of the narrative in uh, the Gospel of John with Jesus and the woman caught in adultery. Again, very good passage to reference right here. So it says, if a matter arises, which is too hard. This is verse 8, by the way between the degrees of guilt for bloodshed between one judgment or another or between one punishment or another matters of controversy within your gates then you shall arise and take him to the place which your lord god chooses and you shall come to the priest the levites to judge there in those days and inquire and they, the levites are to pronounce a judgment and they are to uh you know go to god and look for wisdom and then pronounce a judgment and 
uh, and that's something that uh, they were to do, right? If they didn't know what to do, they would go to the priest, and then the priest would instruct on what needs to be done. And so sometimes we need spiritual guidance in our life, and we need to go to those people that are close to God and ask them questions and seek the Lord and, and seek wisdom from God. That's the idea. But the, the point in these sections is always this idea of you shall put away the evil from Israel. The nation is to be this, this ideal place where there is evil always being put away, right? The putting away of the evil and the distortion of that which is good, right? Think of evil as the bending of the good. It's taking what is good and it's bending it. It's taking what is right and bending it, right? Distorting it. And this is the theme in these sections. Put away, put away. Now, did Jesus talk anything about putting away things, removing things that cause us to stumble? Yeah, he did, right? And so you can see where Jesus gets this. Jesus doesn't pull it out of a hat. <clears throat> this is from the Torah, this is from here, the idea of, hey, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Let's remove the evil from us. That's the idea in these sections. Now, verse 14 and on is very cool. Super interesting section. I think I'll take it tomorrow and go over it. There's some neat things in verses 14 and on. And we've already touched on some really good principles today. So the idea of, hey, God, help me to remove today, help me to move away from things that, that again, cause me to stumble, help me to bring things to people that are spiritual so that we, they can help me to make better decisions in life. And that's important. You know, nothing's wrong with going to the Levites, right? Bringing things before the Levites. Remembering the festivals of God, remembering that God uh, dwells, you know, with me. And that uh, I am to be cognitive and aware of God uh, at all times. Um, and remembering the past, remembering the present and the goodness, being thankful of the present. And also having hope for the future and, and what dwelling with God in fullness is going to be like. Those kind of thoughts. So very cool devotion, setting my mind once again back on the Word of God this morning and starting the day that way. So you guys have a great day, okay? Hey, bless you, and take care. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.